Hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I'm here with David, Rushed Vibes Rushing, who is mimicking me, and it's rather annoying, um, along with myself, Jessica, Rush Tribes Rushing. What up, what up, what up, Vibe Tribe? And he's on something. You know what I'm on? I'm on that red, baby. My red. I'm on that red. My red. And why are you drinking my red? Because I'm out of that brown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. No just, brown in the house. Just wanted to uh, put that out there. But uh, we're here, clearly representing Bullet, kind of looking like a... You know, your your glass is out of place. It's supposed to be right here. Lumberjack. Continuity. Um, Continuity matters, I'm Jessica. I'm switching it up. No, you can't. You can't switch it up. I can switch it up. Switching up is not allowed People here. like change. We do not switch it up here. Yes, we do. No. You know what people are? You know what humans are? Creatures of habit. Creatures of regularity. You need to keep your glass where it's always been. No. All right. So um, we've made it somehow to April. The epicness, which was March. Um, Which was also Montpreneur March. Montpreneur March. My 30 plus one March. Um, I had no milestones other than just another month of being alive yeah so March March was an interesting month and it, it for some reason the month of March is is almost pinnacle now to how the remainder of the year is going to be oh yeah Uh, March is now the groundhog month and it is always extremely long and I say that just basing it on the last two marches. Um, but we made it. We made it to April. Thankfully, no significant April Fools. I really think that that just needs to go away. Like, it's not it's not cute anymore. It's not funny. People do the same thing. Oh, I'm engaged. Oh, I'm having a baby. Oh, I'm moving. Like, like come on. Like, give us. I think the only person who did a good April Fools was Michael Strahan. And he did an April Fools that he got his gap closed. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how he pulled it off, but it was just probably CGI or it was pristine. It no, I mean he's got a a whole video. Yeah, so just CGI. And a smile. He works for ABC, and you know that they can use the Marvel Studios. I don't know, but he he went into effort. Like he posted it March thirty first, so we were like, uh. But turned out it was um, an April Fool's joke. I was with him, whatever his decision was. You know, my mom she had a gap. She does not have a gap anymore. Your mama had a gap. Yeah. Didn't have a gap. Um, so I know gap people can be sensitive about, you know, just their, their gap teeth people. and their, their, their smile. Like their so. species, gap people. <laughs> so I, I, like, if he had done it, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, Michael. Like, you finally decided to do it. You closed that gap. Congrats. But, you know, I felt like his smile is very signature and in, and the gap is, is part of it. Um, so that was a good i think that's the only good april fools that i've seen that i can appreciate but i feel like april fools is very much so expired but yes here we are in april it's interesting i feel like not too much has happened but a lot has happened at the same time i want to stop you right there um i want to make an announcement celebration celebratory announcement we have crossed threshold a mm-hmm. milestone here rush vibes we can you i'm can, sorry can you get that under control i'm sorry i'm trying to i'm trying to end of the night i'm trying to do a bit okay do the let bit. me let me do the bit we have surpassed 100 likes and follows on facebook so thank you to oh, everyone wait, who's do yeah clap. do your pelosi clap to everybody who has connected with us who's liked shared subscribed followed listened listened all the love donated said they listened but didn't actually listen we still appreciate you donated too. We appreciate you. Um, I listened to this podcast last week and it was an entrepreneur based podcast where, you know, they give, uh, they drop gems, um, you know, tips and tips and tricks and just, you know, how to, how to survive as an entrepreneur. And, um, I can't remember the, the, the lady's name, but she said so many entrepreneurs and so many people who try to get a business or a product or whatever off the ground, they get tired and they, they don't succeed because they're just, they're just aiming. They're trying to hit too many targets, right? They say, oh, I want to get a million subscribers. Like, okay, well, how are you going to do that? And then the goals change from, from week to week. So I was like, you know what? 
Let's focus on getting 100 likes on Facebook because that's where we started. So we put out some promotional material. We, we were really intentional about our messaging. We said, hey, we want to get 100 likes. Sure enough, we hit it in a week. I thought it would take us till the end of spring. We hit it in a week. So um, Rush Vibes, the, 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 um, the brains behind the operations here at Rush Vibes, we, well, it's just us. We have uh, a newfound, really him. <laughs> newfound tunnel vision on short-term goals that when we surpass a few of them, we look back and we say, oh, we've come a long way. So thanks to everybody who uh, supports, the, supports the pod. While I'm talking about that, go ahead, subscribe if you haven't. Like us on Facebook. Be one of our 100 plus likes or follows. Uh, but I really want to change our uh, turn our focus to Instagram because we're at about 85 followers, which is... You know, it's not insignificant. It's nice, but we definitely want to get that to 100 as well. So if you're watching us or listening to us, and you haven't followed us on Instagram, be sure to do that because we're actually going to start posting a lot more content. Uh, normally, we just drop our, our pods on the audio podca- podcast platforms. We drop the long YouTube episodes. We're going to start breaking our videos up into segments, and those are going to drop at the same time. Um, so that way, if you don't want to sit and watch us argue for an hour and a half, you can just get the little... The but little, why wouldn't you? The little bites that you want. I mean, some people do. I mean, we're, and we appreciate you. We, we also, do appreciate you. negative shout out to all the people who, um, like, talk about the podcast that we're, like, friends with. We Like, your homies. You've been in our home. But you just like the podcast. Like, yeah, we see it every time it comes through. Where like, you been at? What have like, you been doing? A couple of you, your wives have been on this podcast. Yeah. And you just liked it. Yeah. So, uh, I just want I just wanted to throw some shade out at you. Uh, I... Yeah. Too mad. I'm not mad. I'm just in a shady kind of mood. Yeah. Call me a cloud. Call me a storm cloud. That's just how I'm feeling right so. now. Um, but yeah, so we're really excited. If you haven't liked us on Instagram or Facebook, please be sure to be part of the, you know, 200 on our way to 200. Um, I personally, like, I wasn't too concerned. Um, I don't look at the stats. I don't look at the numbers. I'm not, I, I, it's hard for me to say that I'm not really a goal person. Like, I, I have aspirations, but I don't like setting goals because I feel like when you set a goal, you set a time limit. And then if you don't achieve it in that time limit, you you feel like you feel like you failed. And I don't I I just don't like that cloud hanging over me. So um, but, you know, I'm really proud. Like David made an effort and he he definitely made it happen because it's a level of me. I've been like, all right, we just going to rock with the best of them. They made it happen. You guys made it happen. All right. Now we're going to stop talking like we hit. (laughs) <laughs> thousands of crowd. we had a bunch of, i mean we're still proud but um yeah but uh go ahead like the channel if you haven't subscribe all that good so if you can also support the channel if you want we're on cash app dollar sign r-u-s-h-d-v-i-b-e-s so now that we got the housekeeping stuff out of the way um i want to talk about something that happened to me this week um you know, I, I just got done pulling the knives out of my back. Uh, I posted a photo. <laughs> you know, I, anybody who follows me on social media, you know, I like to, you know, I'm, I'm here for the jokes and the memes, right? I love to get jokes off. I mean, my kids, me and my wife, I mean, myself. Um, so anyone who knows me knows that you know, I have strong affinity for the STEMI, stimulus checks. You know, I like, I mean, I like STEMIs. I love stimmies. You like stimmies? Yeah. Yeah, I like stimmies too. Now, our latest stimmy. Even though you like take has, my half of the stimulus I hostage. You, I don't know what you're talking about. Our latest stimmy. I, don't, I want to call it, I don't appreciate the government. Even though we file our taxes together, I don't appreciate them sending us one check with both our names on it. Like, send us two separate checks. Let me, let me do And the, then individual me, checks to the parents of, I'm trying to do for this, the kids. I'm trying to do this bit. I just, I just, what if he and I aren't, aren't, we're not on good terms at the moment and we still. It sounds like you would have, you'd be short then. <laughs> That's just something that I feel like y'all should have confirmed that I wanted Anyways, a check with his name on it. So the STEMI has evaded us for up to this point. And I posted a picture, a frame from our last podcast. Go check it out, by the way. Uh, it was like, you know, when you're thinking about your stimulus check. And I put that on social media and close friends of mine, some I might even call a brother, took that and decided to meme me. They have the audacity. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a couple of these up. They Jordan faced me. <laughs> Cornball man, I used to go crazy on that field in high school. Like they just 
literally they they turned him into they the ran cat. they ran a mug they didn't mean look at the, the they, they split screen me with Derek jackson <laughs> it's hilarious they, to did me. Me with, they hit me with the sneaker like it i cannot believe i'm impressed people who i who i called brothers which is take me to task on and the you internet. know what's great if this goes like really viral and you're wearing Missy shirt, I am wearing Missy's. so that her company's gonna go. I, I, I am. I am wearing humming her company's beat. gonna go viral I am as wearing, well. I am wearing so, humming bee designs. Missy, um, if you if you're trying to go viral too, uh, hit them shares. I just, I just, they really got him. I think I had taken they, a nap and woken up to just David just being tagged to the point where his meme picture is like two people's profile picture. It's, dis- it's despicable. It's Absolutely amazing. I, so, I couldn't have done this but better myself. But it's cool. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you, you had to understand the internet comes for everybody. So you put yourself out there, you're liable to get memed. But I want everybody to know I did take names. He likes it. No, I took names. He likes it. And I'm not going to, I'm, I'm, I'm methodical with mine. I'm not going to hit you next week, not a month later. But it's coming. Please believe. He got. He I will got have. Bad I will memory. have. I'm gonna be my Russell Crowe. I will have my vengeance in this <laughs> life or the next. I just want to put that put that warning. It's out, hilarious. Shot across the bow. Please no, go copy it, you know, and paste was, them and use them. It was amazing content. I. It, it was fascinating. I put them on our uh, on our Instagram. If you haven't seen them, uh, go check it out. Like us while you're there. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, it was it was fantastic. Was I was impressed. laughing. I was laughing all night long. It was hilarious. So um, I'm still mad at y'all, but. I got I got a good laugh out of it. Yes. So um, now that we got that out of the way, so housekeeping and David being memed. Um, this is kind of like a random topic episode, like just picking picking things that are you know not necessarily that are what picking things out of our what out of our what you said just picking I said things that out are of not our... necessarily oh, you cut you... me off. I'm sorry. Um, that are not necessarily like the hottest topics that are going around, but they're still circulating enough that it's like. Let's let's just get opinions on them. And by opinions, I mean mine and his. So the first thing that doesn't seem to want to go away is, for me, is this Free Britney movement. Now, um, for you youngins, you might not know who she is. But Britney Spears is a pop star, a veteran pop star at this rate. You know, our average viewer is ages 25 to 46. I you know, think. some so, some Zer so might I'm pretty might sure pop they know, I'm pretty this. sure they know who Britney Spears is. But just in is. case you don't know, um Britney Spears, veteran pop star. Um yeah, I was a big fan of her growing up. Yeah, I had the choreography tapes my mom bought them for me, so I'd put them in the VCR and I'd learn all the dances. So to this day I still know most of the choreography to Oops I Did It Again and Hit Me Baby One More Time. I uh, like don't get me in a karaoke bar with enough drinks. I can get it. So for those of you who don't know, Brittany is under conservatorship with her dad. So her dad is essentially running the conser- conserver. Conserver? Sure. Of, of her estate. And initially I didn't care. Like I was just like, okay, he, cause I think he was her manager growing up. So, you know, I, he's, he, I think he's managed her, her little sister who's in acting. Um, she was big in on Disney stuff before she got pregnant at a really young age. So she kind of left and now she's back into acting. My, I will say mild acting cause she's, she's an interesting actress in my opinion. Um, so her dad's been, you know, overseeing her estate. Apparently at one point she was in a lot of debt back when she did the whole shave head attack car windows with the umbrella moment. She had her big breakdown, um, which is probably like her threshold into adulthood. I think we've all had a breakdown at some point where adulting has just overwhelmed us. But, you know, we didn't have the luxury to shave our heads and bus car windows um so he like she was in a lot of debt he got her estate out of debt so from my perspective i'm like i mean you might you might be broke if if this didn't happen but people are you know they've started this free britney movement you know it's hashtag celebrities are are speaking on it you know people are trying to get her to do 
interviews with Oprah to like say her piece. You know, people are concerned because she's doing dance routines in her mansion. And, you know, they say, you know, she doesn't look well. She doesn't have full custody of her kids, which is concerning because, you know, Kevin Federline is the one who has like majority custody of the kids. And if y'all remember Kevin Federline, he was kind of questionable himself. So I don't know. I guess that's saying a lot. I don't know Brittany like that. I don't really know her situation, but from my perspective and from what I'm observing where pe- the people, Miley Cyrus, and I think even Sharon Stone spoke out like Je- Sarah Jessica Parker. Um, so some significant women, mostly white women in Hollywood are, are concerned about Britney's well-being. Um, she has a fiance or a boyfriend who lives with her in this mansion. So it's not like she's struggling. She's not, you know, in some rundown motel. She's, I mean, if I was just in a in a mansion, I'd be I'd be cool. And somebody was managing my money, I'd be all right. So for me, it's an, I like, and I I don't know all the details. So someone who is a super Britney fan, you know, with the picket signs, free Britney, you're welcome to educate me. But from my perspective, this is just a place of privilege, like a privileged, wealthy white woman who is being perceived as in some kind of misery but she, in my opinion she seems fine like I feel like there are so many other movements uh that we need to focus on and people putting all of their energy and focus into this woman who is still a millionaire is in a mansion like she's not working and her estate is still bringing in money and now like she's going to court trying to find a new um conservative of her estate um trying to get her dad off of it so you know i i just i just find it interesting they've done a documentary about it i haven't watched it i don't really care um but it just keeps popping up and people keep talking about free britney free britney and she's not necessarily in prison. I think she's still having some mental health issues. And I know the entertainment industry put her through a lot. Um, from what I heard, they pinned her up against Christina Aguilera. They didn't let her sing in a certain vocal tone. So that messed up her, her vocal cords. Like they made her sing in that like baby teenage voice. Um, and she couldn't really use her, you know, her full vibrato and full skill. Uh, so I guess she's been through a lot, but I'll tell you what, you mentioned Christina Aguilera. She put on some good weight, healthy weight. Seriously, David. I'm just saying. I, you know, when they did the little uh, during the pandemic, ABC. She they was did sitting little, down with a dog. Did, they did their sing along specials. She came a long way because she was she she was looking it's like she was in dire need of a cheeseburger back when she first came out. Now I know I'm probably gonna get get hated on because I'm talking about a woman's body, but I'm I'm appreciating how far she's come. She's come a long way. What? Thanks for interrupting. I'm me sorry. To, you said Christina to, Aguilera. To lust over another nah, woman's I'm not lusting. Body. I'm. I'm. She's come a, a long way. I'm appreciating she's the progress on, she's, she's made. Put on some good weight. That's good weight. Really good weight. I'm just saying. I'm done speaking. Yeah, I mean, people. People say, you know, uh, people of her uh, ethnicity, they don't have the ability to have that good weight. I mean, she's half she's Colombian. Bre- breaking barriers. What? What do you think? Aguilera is an Anglo-Saxon name. <laughs> I'm just saying, she look, she just look white to me. You know how many Spanish singles she's dropped? Nah, I just only know the the what was her joint? What was? I don't even know the song. I just know that she's been around for a minute. Genie in a bottle. Genie in a bottle. Yes. Yes, her last name is Aguilera. I believe her father's Colombian. Oh. I'm tired of school. You learn, of you learn something new every day. <laughs> Talk that shows about, you how in tune I am with, with Hollywood and personality. People of her, her people. Um, anyway, saying. so now that you But she's see, only, she only half Colombian then. So? She's only, the other half is white. So, I mean, I, I would not be, I'm not far off the mark here is what I'm saying. Okay. And we can still appreciate just her, you know, her progress. You seem to be appreciating a lot. Do we need to take a quick break? Nah, I'm just saying. If he come back with it's the one of my. She, she's one of my... <sighs> One of the people I like to see do well. All right, so well you see, this is what this is why Britney's struggling because you mentioned Christina Aguilera and you just completely stopped talking about Britney. I I was never talking about Britney. This is something I was, that you and brought this up. is I'm when sorry. you're supposed to hit I'm me sorry. back. 
You got one nothing? More, one more time. You don't, <laughs> so clearly that look, was man, just nah, me. I'm, all right. So look, I don't, I'll be honest. Um, when Britney Spears was hot, I was, you know, I was, I was in there. I was in there with you. I was in the trenches. I was go Britney. Um, me and my cousin, Ashley, we even, uh, our family used to take, uh, uh, vacation, family vacation to Nags Head, I believe every summer, every other summer. And me and my cousin, Ashley, you know, we would go down there and play some Britney Spears and, you know, we get lit back in whatever, however you got lit back in the mid nineties, mid to late nineties. How did you get lit? Cause I don't remember. I just, okay. I was going to say, cause your lit is, is not. This is my lit. lit. This is me being lit right your now. Your lit is like Capri Sun. Um, <laughs> the disrespect. Um, but I'll be honest. I for, I mean, I don't, I remember the, the driving down the freeway with the baby in her lap. She did that? The half shaved head. I remember all of that, but I'll be honest with you. You know, I, I don't really care. Um, if she's, if she's not well, I, I hope she, she gets the help she needs. As you said, she, I mean, there could be, I mean, champagne problems, right? You living in a mansion, you, you Britney Spears, everybody know about you. You, you are taken care of. It's not like you, you just out on the street. But at the same time, I do think we need to be a little gentle with our assumptions, right? You don't mm-hmm. want to be presumptuous. I mean, we've seen people with millions of dollars be miserable and depressed and mm-hmm. you know take their lives and try to overdose and whatever. So just because someone gives the appearance of being, you know, you know, on living living on a hill and looking down among us doesn't mean that they don't have their own battles and, and Oh, I don't dispute she has battles. So but at the same time I it does it's not something that really, really I think I just really find my it radar. interesting. The few details I do know while they're going back and forth in court, because her dad has conservatorship over her, he's essentially her employee. So he's paying, she, he, her estate is paying him. And her estate is also paying all the legal fees. You know what her dad sounds like? A hustler? A hell of a business. A hell of a hustler and a hell of a businessman. <laughs> so like her legal, his legal fees. Salute to you, sir. <laughs> his legal fees alone are $900,000 plus. Not counting hers. Hey, look, so it's like you're paying to you're fight. Talking about, you're talking about numbers I ain't never even seen. So I. I, I, just, I just find it interesting. Um, I ob- Obviously, for any human being in the world, I want the best for her. Um, but, you know, I do I do take in, the details that I see that I've taken into account. Like, I mean, he got you out of significant millions of dollars of debt. And now you're you are making money from essentially not doing anything um i think she did oh, have the beauty of royalties you that's don't have true to do anything. but i mean if she had not lost concert like self i don't know if you just she self-existence probably. um independence uh who knows what kind of debt she'd be in who knows what situation she'd be in so you know i think my frustration is i get that this is like you said champagne problem um i get that at any income bracket that you are, you have issues. Um, your wealthy issues, Bezos's issues, and my issues are not going to be the same. Maybe we'll catch a cold. That might be the closest thing to the same issue we would have. Um, but we'll have issues nonetheless. Like he had to give half his fortune to his wife or ex-wife. So, I mean, we all have issues. But... <laughs> When it comes to issues that need to be mainstream, that people need to be protesting, that people need to be like picketing I don't about, think, I don't think Jeff Bezos got any problems. I don't, he, he might be the one exception. I don't think that freeing you know, Britney Spears. You remember know that joke Chris Rock them. said at one time? He said Jeff Bezos is so rich when he write when he writes a check, the bank bounces. <laughs> I, someone did math and said that well, he has enough money to give everybody in the world a no, billion dollars and still stop. have like a hundred and twenty six billion it. dollars. Jeff Bezos I don't want does him not have give, Jeff Bezos does not have fifty some billion dollars sitting in Chase Bank. Okay. Okay. I'm sure he does. I'm sh- no, he doesn't. So there are seven billion people. There are like eight billion. He people. does. I, I wish people look. We have fun with it. It's, it's a spectacle for he liquidated Forbes everything and, and all these all these publications they love running articles on on wealth and, and net worth and how it goes up and down and stuff if, and I and I get it I'm sure but he look, got some funds in Bank stop, of America stop it you will not do this on he, Rush Vibes probably, stop yeah. counting other people's money stop trying to guilt people and then giving want, other people I mean, money I'll take his money but I don't want his money I don't need no you it. won't take his money matter of fact you give him money I do all the time I support his business I'm, I am a true capitalist. 
Like I, I ain't got no problem. I'll spend money on Amazon. I just support. Like the next I person. support business. Um. So that was m- number one random topic. What you got? You know what I got? A break. Back. We're back. Like we never left. Because we didn't. I do want to address that I'm wearing. I think they call these caftans. Um, to me, they're just um, old white lady dresses. But um, I need you to keep your your hand out of my shot. Appreciate it. Keep your keep your um, Af- African hand out. Of and my I shot. feel like someone's gonna make a comment on it. It's really like it's really just my house dress. Um, I took a late shower tonight, and I got like evening dressed. And then realized we were recording, so I just wasn't motivated you know, to we, go. We, we like to be casual here at Rush Vibe Studios. Yeah, most of the time. Also I, known as our house where we live. Our living room. So, um, you know, what's crazy is that um, we literally invite strangers into our house. Keep your hand on your mushroom. Every single week, strangers. So, like, there are some strange, like, people watching us have a better idea of the layout of our house than even family members that we have. Are you fucking me? Oh, <laughs> I was like, girl, you better <laughs> You're I'm flicking me off. I'm pretending to stick my finger up your nose. Right. Anyway, um, so yeah, I just wanted to address that. You know, sometimes I have to remind myself that this is, you know, film that's going to be on TV. Not TV, but YouTube. Um, but we play it on TV. And, you know, this might blow up. We might become somebody. And I don't really want someone to go back and be like, dang. Look at toe up looking, from the flow up. Looking kind of rough. <laughs> so um, sometimes I put some effort in, but today I didn't. So it's my oversized caftan. I usually go as far as the mailbox in this thing. Um, the last time you went to the mailbox. Because I know you weren't checking for the STEMI. No, I didn't care. <laughs> you don't care until it come in. Because I live like, by okay, faith. What we going to buy? And not by sight. What, I live what by did we faith get? And not by stimulus. <laughs> what the I, what Lord is my stimulus. I, I shall it. not want. I got a STEMI. Anywho, I might let you hold some. My name's on that check. You be trying to shortchange me. I'll call Samuel, Uncle oh, Sam, okay. <laughs> Sam <laughs> over your head. Samuel Jackson. Um, speaking of white people with money, I wanted to talk also about Sharon Osbourne. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Sharon Osbourne. She came into my life. Um, back when they had that reality show, remember, um, when Ozzy and I, I, I was so uncomfortable with Ozzy cause, and I remember my dad used to like clown him cause no one could understand what he was saying. So we didn't know like, how people knew what he was saying. Cause he, so, you know, they were such a dysfunctional English rock family and, you know, Kelly, the old, I think she's the oldest daughter. Um, Kelly, the daughter, like she lost a ton of weight. I don't know whatever happened to the son. I think he was like the only really normal family member. Um, and I think there's like an illegitimate kid in there somewhere um, from Ozzy. So, you know, but Sharon Osbourne, I guess kind of became, got American notoriety because of that show and just being, you know, Ozzy Osbourne's wife. I don't know any of his songs. I don't even know the band he was in. Um, I just know he was like a former rocker roller dude um, from England. So <laughs> rocker roller dude wow. from England. So, you know, just for, extremely <laughs> cultured if you haven't, you haven't been able to tell. So Sharon Osbourne for about 11 years now, she's been one of the either four or five hosts of Bro, put your hand down and get out my shot. Oh my gosh. G- fix your camera so that my hand isn't in. Goodness in gracious. How about you learn to talk without moving your hand? I How can't. about that? I've tried it. I cannot. I need, I need my hand. So Sharon Osborne, has been co-hosting about to the, hit you with some Mike Turner stuff. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> the talk, uh, which I think is a CBS, the CBS counterfeit version of the View. Um, it is. Why you? Gotta, it is. It's not the View. It's not counterfeit. It's just it's CBS's version of the View. It, just like a million come little up, things is they ABC's couldn't even version come of This up Is Us. With an original title, The Talk. Like, but that's what they do. They sit around and they talk. Anyway, so Sharon Osbourne has been one of the original. She might be the only original member that's still that was still on the show, and recently got into a spat because she and Piers Morgan, her fellow Brit, um, after the whole Meghan Markle ordeal, she came to his defense, and she essentially said, and "As I'm, a good friend should." Yes, um, a good racist friend should always come to their racist friend's defense. What's your racist? Um. 
So I mean, I'll 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 do the bit, and you is can she, you can let me know if she's she racist. Will? So you know, Piers went off, um, and then resigned from his job. He stepped was, down. He was really fired. Um, and recently found out he was replaced by the weatherman. Um, so the weatherman who you know put him in his place got his job. Oh, so, that was a weatherman. Who yeah, was, who's rapping to him yeah. when he when he walked off the set? Mm-hmm. Black talk, guy. Talk about a come up. I'm so proud of you, sir. Um, so he he this replaced Pierce. Diabolical <laughs> behavior. <laughs> I love English people. Have you ever come across an Englishman Absolutely with a deep voice? Diabolical behavior. Have you ever come across an Englishman with a deep voice? I haven't come across an Englishman. I mean, even on TV. That's something that uh, bothers me. Idris Elba? Oh, yeah. It just has an amazing voice. Speaking but of which, uh, his new movie dropped on Netflix if you haven't watched oh, it. Oh, the Cowboy Joint? Yeah, Concrete Cowboys, I think. Okay, cool. We'll have yeah, to we watch should, that. We can watch it. Oh, we'll do a review. If we'll you watch don't, it after we uh, after we finish no, this you're episode. No, you're gonna fall asleep. No, no. Yes, you are. Don't so do that. anyway, so she and Piers are good friends. Piers went off on his little morning show, the the English version of Good, uh, good Morning America. Went off on Megan because I guess she ghosted him, even though he's been married for like the whole time he was trying to get with her, I guess, whatever. Um, you can find your own details. So she was like, P.S. is a good man, and just because he's racist or said racist things does not make me a racist. And they were like, chick, but it do. <laughs> like, you can't, like you, you can't go hard defending someone who has done racist things. Like, you can attempt to defend their character, but at, after a certain point, after specific statements, like, this person's racist and if you're going to stand up to them or for them you're you're essentially def- defending racism um so she got into a little tiff with either her name is cheryl or sherry i can't remember um one of the long-running black um co-host of the show and poor miss underwood because i can't remember if her name is sherry or cheryl she essentially got berated by sharon sharon like I can't remember what question one of the producers had Cheryl ask, but it, it sent Sharon over the edge and she went in and she was, I I guess it got to the point where Cheryl might've started to get emotional and Sharon pretty much told her that her feelings are not valid. She said she didn't have the right to get, to start crying. If anyone had the right to start crying, it was herself being Sharon um, because of the matter. And, Poor Cheryl just she essentially had to sit there and take it because if she had responded to Sharon with the same energy Sharon was given her, this conversation would be different. The public would be looking at it as Cheryl is being the this angry black woman who is attacking Sharon. Sharon is taking advantage of her tears and she's in a place where she feels like she needs to defend herself. So recently, after taking I think a two or three week hiatus, CBS was like, all right, we're just going to sever ties. So they're spewing it that Sharon resigned, that she stepped down. Uh, we all know she got fired. They're paying out her contract. She's still getting like five to ten million dollars. So she's still like she's she's still on the come up. Like people need to start writing like racist clause into contracts. So like if you're getting kicked, like fired for racism, like we don't have to pay you out your contract, um, like null and void. So I just I believe that's called a morals clause. So CBS has no morals because they, they don't, they, they're not, but Sharon is known for being mean. And even her daughter has said some obnoxious things. Like I think back when Trump was, um, was president or was running for president and they were talking about, you know, immigration and deporting people and all of this stuff. Um, she had co-hosted the view, I think, um, interesting that she went on, you know, the original show talk show. Um, and she said, she had said something along the lines of if we deport all of the Mexicans, um, generalizing people, um, she said, who are going to clean the hotel bathroom, something along the lines of that. So it just shows like, so, I want to. I want to. I want to jump in. Okay. Um, you know, we watch The Bachelor. Mm-hmm. The, that was a big one. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a big one. Please edit that uh, out. I'll, I'll try. Uh, <laughs> Can I? <laughs> Jessica just did like the the I'm so, it's allergy the largest season snot I've ever heard ew. in my life. Edit that out too. What you just and said. And you was right. You were right over the mic too. I might leave it in. I might give Don't y'all a do treat. It like that. It'd be a treat Don't for do y'all. Don't like that. Um. Uh, tell me the the the, Niger- the Nigerian dude's name who co who hosted 
after the rose after the oh um emmanuel h o so uh for those of you who maybe follow who don't follow the bachelor for those of you who just don't care i'm gonna tell you anyway um there was a series of things that played out over the course of this recent bachelor season where uh, we had our first black bachelor and the woman he ended up picking uh, was uh, it's I had some old photos surface of her at antebellum parties back in you know it was like three years 17. ago 2018 2017 or whatever um and then there's some other things that came out social media history like liking some uh questionable Federate. questionable posts so uh and chris harrison the host of the bachelor went on um, extra with rachel Lindsay, who was a former first black bachelorette and they had a they had a very intense conversation Chris ended up getting in a bunch of hot water and said he was going to step away to get some some training or education to be more racially sensitive. So I say that to say, uh, Emmanuel H.O. 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 Uh, Acho. Acho. Dude, uncomfortable conversations with a black dude on YouTube. Pretty good. Go check it out on YouTube. Um, he ended up hosting after the final rose. So he was talking to Rachel, the woman who was... Uh, who had been chosen by Matt, but then he broke up with it when all the stuff came out. Also known as Antebellum Annie. Antebellum Annie, as Jessica calls her. He told her, um, there are, there are, we're, we're in a time where everybody wants to call everything racist, right? Like, oh, you said something about a black person. You're automatically racist. Or, oh, you played into a stereotype about black people. Oh, you're automatically racist. And he said, there are things that are racially insensitive, and racially, I think racially ignorant may have been a term he used. And then there's actual racism. So I think what may be, what may have happened with Sharon, I don't know. I'm not really in this space, right? I don't care about the Osbournes. I don't care about Sharon. I don't care about peers. I don't care about anybody on these shows. Now that I don't care about them, I hope they're all well and healthy, but they don't really. I'm not too concerned about peers. Yeah. They, they don't really cross my, my, uh, my, my, my vision peripheral vision these days um i think what may may be happening here is that she's racially ignorant or racially insensitive i don't know that she's necessarily racist, she's racist. um <laughs> and from what i've seen like a lot of the articles that i've read because i did a little bit of research because i figured we were going to be talking about this she says some things that are foul um but i don't know that they would equate to like like to like actual racism um she may just be one of those just toxic people. Like so I think who, she's racist. Um, I, <laughs> okay. I disagree and nullify everything you said. One. You don't have, um, have to nullify. You can just disagree. Why you got to nullify? I mean, you're lucky I didn't cancel and nullify. Goodness Get gracious. real spiritual on you. Tough crowd. Uh, I think I think she is racist. But I think there, I, the thing about racism is I think there are, there are levels, you know, people, there are levels to this. There are levels to racism. Like you got, like racism is almost like salsa. You got, you know, your basic salsa. It's just tomatoes, like it's pico. It's just tomatoes, onions, salt, and pepper. And then you've got like mild. So they might put like the jalapeno, but they take the seeds and the membrane out. Then you got medium where they, they lead the seeds. And then you got like hot where they put the seeds, the membrane, they might throw in a habanero pepper. Like it's, it's, it's increasing. And I think racism has that same effect where you you are racially biased um and you you a lot of your opinions of people are based are are, are racially what, what biased. has she said that would equate to her being racist other than saying piers morgan is my friend uh she referred to i can't remember what her the other co-host she's chinese uh like she like called her like so so offensive asian uh rate like she i think she called her like eyes or something like that she referred to um holly robinson is this, he, is this hearsay is this alleged or is this no factual? you can find it okay um uh, she referred to holly robinson p as um ghetto uh and was part of her alleged firing because she was too ghetto for the show um she there was uh is it melissa gilbert the uh the roseanne lady the daughter uh who is a, a lesbian she you know she called her um, on a regular basis. So she, she creates a toxic environment, but her toxicity, in my opinion, is rooted in racism. And I think one, 
the effort that she went into to defend Piers um, was unnecessary. Like, one, Piers is going to defend himself regardless. Like, he's, he, he, when he first got introduced to America, I don't remember what the grounds were, but he was, like, an okay guy. Like, I didn't care about him. And then recently, in the last five years, he's, he's, be, like, as he's gained weight, he's gained this ugly persona about him. And he has, he just delivers just in my opinion just he just has a very ugly side of his personality and the way maybe you just disagree with his ideologies you i mean yeah but does that make him but i think the delivery (laughs) can make a difference too like you You can but it's it's important to not it's okay it's important it's important to distinguish the tone from the message right like just because somebody somebody delivers something in a way that is unfavorable to you so it doesn't I need necessarily you to remember this the next time you bother me or you say something to me and i respond no, why does it gotta come back to us we're not talking about manner. us no because you're not gonna we're sit here about and drop about this philosophical no nah, it's not even it's not even it's not even it's like it's the it's the message not the messenger right like people who so remember people who you disagree with can say things that have merit you just have to actually listen to the message and not not the person who's speaking it and not the way in which it's being said you have to actually just listen to what they're saying like I are mean, we are like I last do. week like so like when, last week when, last week i played the candace owens clip when she was going off about Lil nas x i don't personally I don't personally i don't i don't necessarily agree with a lot of what she says and i don't care for her delivery but a lot of what she says as you agreed had some merit. I won't yeah. say a lot, but some of what she said had some merit. It didn't so even imp- thinking thinking. It's like it's in, it's important to listen to what people are actually saying. I mean, and I get not what focusing you're on who they are, what party affiliation they have, what network they're on, whether they're whether they're yelling or whether they're they're calm, and just listen to the message. Now, this is not a, a defense of Piers Morgan. This is not a defense, like a defense. This is not a defense of of Sharon are you Osbourne. Are racist? Because you are defending these. Ra- <laughs> these races i'm not defending i'm just saying what you're saying because at peak pandemic when trump was like if you stop testing people the numbers will stop going up i understood i i connected with that i was like this man is is dropping some intelligent knowledge like he's not lying he's saying facts actually like if you if you don't want the numbers to go up stop testing people the metrics are there. The math is there. The stats it was are there. All hoax cause, and, I cause, mean, cause he, coronavirus is actually gone by last last Easter. He, we should be celebrating so, our year of no COVID <laughs> this Sunday because so, it disappeared last April, according yeah, to Trump. He did say Easter. He didn't specify what Easter. So, oh, okay. I mean, to an extent, he's a man of he, his word. He's a prophet. Like, he, he said we will get he back to life like on Easter for Easter. And, you know. Nobody. <laughs> Easter's come and we 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 did he he did he did do that so I mean I, I guess like I do I guess I just feel as Never. if it, it it depends on the effort that you go through and I guess it's until you're in a certain situation and someone is judging you from that perspective it's hard to say I don't know if if I am friends with a racist. Or someone who says something extremely racially insensitive that leans towards or gains them the accusation of being racist, what defense I would have. Um, I don't know how I would have to know them to say this isn't who they are or this is just a persona they're putting out for you. But at the same time, I think it's also important to the thing is people are always quick to defend, but people don't really want to take a moment to say this is this is where I messed up. This is where he messed oh, yeah. up. So I think if she had come from that perspective, but she took on this 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 shield as I have to protect him so, and in turn protect myself when no one was battling her. Well, I think people have just subconsciously, they automatically default, if they have a close relationship with someone, automatically default to trying to paint the best picture of that person, right? Like an example I have is, um, you know, rest in heaven, but when Kobe Bryant passed away, um, the the much publicized interview that Gail had with Lisa Leslie mm-hmm. and people were getting on Gail because like, why are you bringing up Kobe's um, sexual assault case? And she asked Lisa Leslie about it. And Lisa was like, oh, well, you know, he's no, he's, he never gave me that impression. He was always great when he was around me. And from from what I know, you know, like he was I can't remember exactly what she said, but she clearly didn't know anything about the case. She was like he was acquitted or whatever. And um, she was just saying some, she she wasn't knowledgeable about the case, but she was obviously trying to just say anything to not paint Kobe in a negative light. And 
you can have a discussion about whether that was fair of Gail to bring that up. And in my opinion, the question is, it was completely unfair and out of bounds. But in that moment, if you just look at that moment separately, you can see how when you're when you when you're close with someone or you have a high opinion of someone and they get caught up into a mess, it's just almost in, in, instinctive to just jump to their defense and try to paint them in the best possible light without even actually knowing what but I think what any any context about the situation. So, so I to think, your point, I'm sorry to cut you off, but you I did. Get your hand out of my um, I think maybe that's because you know there's so many like proverbs of you know show me your friends, I'll show you who you are. So. Granted, I still think Sharon Osbourne is racist, but by her affiliation to Pierce, if she doesn't defend Pierce as not being racist, then she's not defending herself as not being racist. So I guess I guess maybe that's where people are coming from. But at the end of the day, I do think in a moment where if where if someone does something inappropriate and they're affiliated to you and there's evidence that they've done this inappropriate thing, it's about owning it. Like, everybody has their vice on not condoning vices. Let me ask you something. What did Pierce say that was racist? Uh, I mean, he's constantly belligerating and attacking Megan. Um, I don't know exactly what he said, but he has said some things. And the fact that he, you know, attacked her uh, when she claimed or when she said that she struggled with mental health and he essentially said, I don't believe any of that. And, and that's such a touchy. Is that, a, is that because she was black or just because he didn't believe her? I think a lot of it, I think one, the British media attacks her specifically because she is part black um, or half black, excuse me, or she is black. Um, so I think a lot of it is stemmed. This is so no, hard no, I'm, not, I'm laughing at the, you remember the, the article, that came on a couple of months ago where they were talking about Don Lemon and they said Don Lemon, who was openly black. <laughs> the British, the English said this? I, no, I don't know who, somebody was writing an article about He's something that had black. happened and they said Don Lemon, who was openly black. <laughs> and I was just like, what? What editor what is, didn't catch what is that? openly black? Why are you thinking about I don't know. It's just, when you said part black, it's just, it popped up my mind. So when Don Lemon... He opened his show the next night because, you know, Cuomo hands off to him. <laughs> he was like, I'm Don Lemon and Chris, I am openly black. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I, I think I think what the person who wrote it was trying to say is like, gay. he doesn't know. He, he doesn't hide um, like his, his black, black pride. I mean, shows culture. On his face. Yeah. So I think that's way it meant, but it's just like, you don't have to say oh, that. Oh, that's funny. But openly it black. got people talking about the article. I am openly black as well, as is my I'm, wife. I'm closeted black. Um, I'm just not quite at the point where I'm ready to come out, f- out forthright with Anytime my Anytime Jessica um, talks to somebody on the phone before they ever meet her, they think that she's like this blonde chick. Yeah. So maybe you are there, closeted black. There is um, there's one job I got. I'm not going to air out the company. Jessica walks in and they'd be like, oh. Yeah, so I won't air out the company. I was supposed to do black. a video chat, and the video chat didn't work, so it ended up being Hips. a phone interview. And I got hired. I like I got I did the interview, and within twenty minutes, I got the call. They they were like, "We we love you. We want, we want you. You, you got to fly out to St. Louis for training." Cool. You went to St. Louis. Yeah. When you I went to St. Louis? Louis twice. When was this? In twenty thirteen. Where was I? Doing whatever you do. <laughs> or whatever you did at the time. Yo, me and Jessica, I think we'll dedicate an entire, I don't know if we should. Nah. I don't think we they're got, ready. They're but yo, ready. we have a very, we talk about toxicity. We have a very toxic past. Um, anyway. Which may lead into our next segment. We we never got physical, but we were just, we had it a very unhealthy relationship. It, it, yeah, it was. Um, don't ever. It, I mean, look, it wasn't as bad know, as he's making it sound. Look. I've, look, I've dealt with worse. Look, the, Lord, the Lord. The <laughs> Lord. The Lord did some things with us. He, he intervened. He stepped in. But anyway, so I get to I get to St. Louis for training. Ooh. And when I tell y'all, I am three the, minutes. It is 40, 40 people at this training. There is one mixed dish man. And, and here Jessica. I am. This I mean, a I am flying the ointment. I'm the, the chia seed in the Greek yogurt. <laughs> like I and, I and I was working another job that had me outside. So I'm tanned. I am. I am blackity black, like blackity black, black, black. Like what did Umar Johnson say? Blue, black, blue, black, <laughs> darker, the berry, sweeter, the juice, black. Like I am black glistening, like skin glistening for no reason. You know, it's black. The, old, the older the berry, the sweeter and the juice. whatever. Smoky. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> 
I learned that at Moorhead University. But it's the old uh, man. It's weird. Yeah. But no, no, no. This black of the bird. It's the black. Of the- Oh, the bear, the sweet the dark, of the juice. I thought the dark of the bear, yeah, yeah, the sweet you, of the you juice. Said, you said so it right, yeah, my don't bad. come for me. I had, I had a wrong. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen Friday Y'all in a minute. Y'all saw that? I might not know it's everything. Like, man, it's the black of the bear, the sweet of the juice. Ha. They're going to they re-meme you. Get ready. If y'all meme um, me. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is I got to that I'm training be low, I'm be and clips. I was the only Let the black chopper sing. person there. And it's no secret that I only got that job because it was not a video it was not a video because I Jessica Jessica walked in and it was like record scratch. E-beep. I was waiting. I was waiting because we were all like to meet in the lobby. And every time the elevator door opened, I was like, please be black. Please be black. Nobody. But I mean, I'm not I'm, you know, I'm used to being in those spaces. The industry I'm in, I'm used to being one of none or one of very few black people. And that's because um, I want to move away from the sharing thing. But that's it's, it's interesting that you say that because I've seen a lot of people. Um, like there's a social media post, uh, one of my friends on Facebook, Garrett, he had posted, I think Dak Prescott, the ca- the quarterback from mm-hmm. Cowboys, he got, uh, he got like, I think might be the largest contract of a quarterback ever. Cowboys like, can still afford to be putting out money. Yeah. Jerry Jones got deep pockets and I'm, I'm going to be quick with this, but he was like, yeah, uh, Garrett was just basically applauding him. Like, you know, go, go get your money black man and and then um one of our other friends commented was like well why does it have to be about race and i can understand why some people wouldn't understand why we have to highlight oh the first black Mm -hmm. to do this or the first black to do this although for us it would seem self-explanatory because in 2021 we're still having firsts for for black people but when you there there's something about just the anxiety you have of being in a space where everybody else Mm-hmm. looks the same and then you're different and there's and and it's not so much about skin color but within our within our race you know there's culture there's yep. there's there's tendencies there's there's jokes there's just a whole bunch of stuff where a lot of what you would use to do icebreakers to relate to other people other people won't get because they're not a part of that culture mm-hmm. so it's really important representation matters having people having diversity in certain spaces matters because that allows people to feel comfortable, especially when you're talking about a work environment and then that they can actually open up and be allow the creative juices to flow and be successful. But if you feel like, you know, nobody else is going to understand you or you have to operate a certain way in a certain space for eight hours a day for, you know, however many hundreds of days you work a year, it can get draining and get exhausting. tiring and get exhausting and you just like burn out. So you know, anyone who has to, like, in your industry, you've had to deal with that, like, as long as you've been working. Mm-hmm. Um, but after a while, it just get ex- gets exhausting. I've had to deal with that myself working in corporate America. Um, so representation definitely matters. Um, so for anybody who doesn't understand it, like, just trust people who say that it matters. <laughs> it does. And not, like, say, why does it have to be about race or why does it have to matter? Because it, it seems condescending and is actually really insulting because it's not something that you could ever understand so rather than say oh you shouldn't say that because it honestly ultimately i think it just makes people uncomfortable say oh well help me understand like what it's like for you like try to understand rather than just saying oh well you should you should be like me and not say it because that way nobody has to deal Mm -hmm. with the reality and and be uncomfortable so this is my piece on that let's take a quick break we'll come back and then we'll wrap up cool so we're back. We did leave off on just representation. And I want to emphasize, because I think a big thing with representation, just because you have diverse spaces doesn't mean people have to be canceled out. So I think a lot of, and I, I'm not white, I'm, I can't necessarily speak for white people. I'm not trying to do that for y'all. But I think a lot of white people have an insecurity that if places and areas become more diverse, they lose their voice, they lose their power, they they aren't at the table. Uh, and that's not the case. Uh, white perspectives are needed too. Not as much, but they're needed. Um, the, <laughs> I'm just kidding. The thing is, because the way the, because of the way our society has been designed a lot of us already understand white perspectives um, because that's what we've grown up having. That's what we've grown up knowing. You know, I always had white Barbie dolls. I always had, you know, all the American doll 
American Girl doll books I had, most of them were white girls. Anytime I played games, for the most part, I always had to pick a white avatar. Um, the TV shows, Friends, Frasier, Seinfeld, a lot of the, the shows and culture I grew up is white based. So yeah, I, I feel like I have a decent understanding of, you know, what goes into white culture. Um, but that doesn't mean because you have like for me i get annoyed when there's a new show and it still has a white female lead and the black best friend and i always think why didn't someone think let's swap this like they're the the black girl is capable of being awkward the black girl is capable of you know wanting to shout out to Issa Rae. shout out to Issa Rae. uh and we can talk about her later and huh? sign that deal with, with warner yeah warner like Brothers. A, what a five-year deal um it's epic and you know she's really trailblazing and if you haven't watched insecure regardless of your race i highly encourage you to watch it not with children around um but it's Definitely not. it's it's a 30 minute show on hbo not a kid show. but i mean it just kind of shows you that black women and black people can have the exact same struggles but we're not we're not given those spaces on the mainstream. You know, a lot of shows that do have, you know, black stars are usually dramas. Like you think of Olivia Pope um, and uh, Kerry Washington playing her, uh, Viola Davis, and there are these extreme dramas, but there aren't a lot of, you know, the sidekick shows where it's the black girl that's the star and the white girl who's the sidekick. And I think a lot of that, that would make a huge difference. Um, Cause like I said, in the last show, a lot of, other races look at entertainment to determine how cultures are, how a people are. So I do think representation in that capacity is so, so, so important. And the few shows that are doing it, like This Is Us, like they, with I'll Never Get Over the Coconut Oil and, you know, mm. Beth wrapping her hair at night and just her different hairstyles, like, I, like that, that is peak the epitome of where actually that's just the ground level of where we need to be um so i i i feel like a lot of with all the race talks that we've been having in the past year um across the world across the country i feel like people need to be reassured that we're not trying to cancel an entire color of people like you are part of conversations but if it's a table of 10 y'all shouldn't have eight seats well i think in it's my all, opinion i think it's also just demographics right like just the demographics of the country are, are changing and it's no secret that america loves black culture right like you look at dances you look at hairstyles you look at fashion you look at oh don't get me started inter- you saw what jimmy fallon did people are mad at him you look at no i didn't see it. Uh, you look at it. look at entertainment like it's just this people love it i mean it's 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 beautiful honestly uh but i think what what we're seeing now is people are starting to recognize uh as creators um, and as creatives, the power that they have. And so there's a little bit of bargaining power that they have now when they go to these tables. And it's not just the old gatekeepers. It's not the, the three or four major television networks. It's not the two or three, you know, major uh, movie uh, studios. Now you have Netflix, you got Hulu, you've got Amazon, right? And you have these these tech companies that mm, you could say are a little more progressive. Every, ultimately, everybody wants to make money, right? Mm-hmm. Capitalism knows no you know, knows no, and the black dollars, no, no, no side, but you know, they're, they're more inclined because they're looking at trends and they're looking at people are cord cutting and the young, the younger demographics, um, are, are skewing toward, um, these streaming platforms. And, you know, the, they look at the content that's being consumed and they're like, okay, well, let's, you know, let's just, you know, keep, keep giving people these opportunities to make fire content. And that's what's happening. So, um, and so you see things like Issa Rae, you see things like Shonda Rhimes, uh, you see things like a- Ava DuVernay, um, Ryan Coogler, um, what's the guy's name, the the developer of Blackish? Donald, Go- oh, uh, Kenya Barris? Yeah, yeah, got a huge, huge, Netflix threw a bank at him. Like, and so you're starting to see now, like a more, you're starting to see those black leads, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're starting to see pieces um, time pieces with black leads like like Bridgerton, right? They um, messed up, y'all. It, it's 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 how the book the books were written. No, calm down. Apparently, he is in the second book. They took. It doesn't mean he I, won't I, be back. They, they took reggae out. I see them doing this like kind of like Game of Thrones, where 
you have all these characters and you may be able to bring like His some certain characters may be dominant in one season and then they may take you ain't watched a season it. off and come back. His no, contribution I in season so I, one. I, have not all, I will admit Jessica watched it in like the span of a week. No, I watched at, it in a day. In a day. And I came in and out and all I ever saw was this dude just banging, <laughs> banging his wife. I'm like. So is this show just about like is this power back in the, the seventeen or eighteen hundreds or whatever? Like is this all it is? I swear every time I walked into the room, I like, was, he was so lucky because Solace was, was like just, so absorbed in he her just tablet. Give, he was just giving it to. Her. I'm like, and she was upstairs, so I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try because like, it's not something got, I could watch with her around. Like, you know they got websites for this, right? <laughs> like, you know, he's you could, exaggerating. It's I'm a like, good. It's a good. It's kind of like, great. Dang, this is all they. This is all they do. I'm an adult, but I mean, goodness, I want to see some character development. I want a story arc. It did have a story arc. It's very interesting. N- not that I can tell. Um, but I, I just don't. There was know. only there was only one arc. <laughs> but if you even if you watch that was, series, what's beautiful about it, and I don't know how true to the book it is, but I think they, I think what happens in the storyline is you know the Civil War happens. I think they in America. Obviously, the show takes place in the UK. Um, but I think it in the free freeing of blacks. Um, around the world in England, blacks are able to gain stature. So he's a Duke and it is, it is recognized and they do touch on like, you know, before the war, they mentioned that they touch on queen Charlotte. So they do have a black woman playing queen Charlotte. Um, Oh, and I do need to retract a statement I made two episodes ago. Nobody I accidentally cares. said that Buckingham palace was purchased for queen Elizabeth, um, who's black. Queen Elizabeth is obviously not black queen Charlotte, who is from Germany. She queen Charlotte of Mecklenburg. Um, she is of Moorish descent. If you part, do, she's, she's part black. She is of Moorish descent. If you do your research, they talk about how her features are very strong and African like they intentionally had a lot of artists paint like when they did paint her soften up her features but when they were doing the war uh the civil war or the revolutionary war and the British were trying to get slaves to support them and fight with them they did use her blackness they were like oh your queen is black so fight you know for her you know it's um, funny so- you know it's funny is um over these last couple of years there have been a lot of movements to have confederate statues torn down and um, what's funny is that one of the main arguments is that oh, we don't need to erase history. <laughs> like we need to keep history so that we can learn from our. We need to. We need to learn. Stop it. We need to learn from our past. We don't want to erase history, and we don't know what happened. We're doomed to repeat it. But because we don't have no race, we don't have no race problem, Jessica. I got a heart problem. But what's funny is if you go back and look at history. It's nothing <laughs> but white people trying to erase history. <laughs> this is very true. Like if you just look at it, like erasing history is literally <laughs> a hobby of this country. So not it's a re- just, revising for look, their comfort. It'd be erasing that joint, but erasing it re- and revising. But so I, it's just I, this is funny. But. I listened back to that episode and I cringed because I was saying Elizabeth. We were just dropping. Yeah, nobody, we were dropping cares. so many names and my mind you were was dropping just names. going too fast. I don't, so think, I don't think anybody caught it. King George married. We don't need to, we don't need to do this. King George married Queen Charlotte of Mecklenburg from Germany. They met, they married the next day or like within 48 hours. He bought Buckingham Palace as a gift to her. So first of all, Meghan is not the first black in in Buckingham Palace or in the royal family. Queen Elizabeth probably got some Moorish blood running through her. It might be small, but it's in there. And what's this the one drop rule? So technically they're black. So, you know, let's we, we should just start coming for all of them like tabloids come for it but you know people have made the exception back to my point with bridgerton they do a great job at at accentuating black excellence um they do have a black woman playing queen charlotte um because historically it is known that she does have black in her um so you know cancel culture they try to erase that but the city the city of charlotte is named after her if you go and you look at her statues Queen City, if you baby. See some of her pictures, her accurate pictures. Queen City. That's that. She got some black in her, and we black people, we know, we see, we see black. Yeah. So uh, earlier, we last segment, we talked about how we used to have a toxic relationship. I don't like that you say that because I, I feel like it was, it was pretty toxic. No, because yeah, I. Was. So, anyways, because I know of, people gonna think that we're just busting windows out of each other's. No, cars. it was never. It was never physical. Ever. 
but it was it was un- it was to a point it was it was unhealthy and maybe one day we'll talk about He's it. He's exaggerating, maybe but we'll let you guys be the judge of it. Please will. don't think that I'm some battered emotional. It's not, it's not about you. It's not just about, woman. like, why do you have to think it, it would automatically be that? Like, it could be equal or I could have been, like, really immature or you could have been. Yeah, but immaturity like, and toxicity are two different things. I say we collectively were. I didn't say you were toxic. I didn't say I, didn't say I was toxic either. So anyways, <laughs> speaking of toxicity, you know, um, on one thing uh, that that flew across my radar this week or maybe it was last week i don't know i was too too jumped up i was too caught up in the get your hand out my friend in the in the blood shoes and the um it's quavo and his ex girlfriend fiance ex-girlfriend saweetie i i, I mean, please I'm stop not, looking for confirmation i don't, I don't know I, I i'm pretty sure it's saweetie so some of you you people who are more hip some of you younger people correct me if i'm wrong um, break it down phonetically in the in the comments for me, but apparently they um, she's a she's a she's a rapper. Um, he's obviously part of Migos, and they were dating, and and I think she broke things off due to infidelity. Allegedly, my Michael my Michael Jackson meme. Allegedly, and um, that was it. So this happened some time ago, but recently a video came out that was. Leaked to TMZ, of course. TMZ, man, I tell you, look, TMZ. We we need to go ahead and get rid of like the Secret Service and the FBI. TMZ be on it. Like, if you need like private investor, like they should all just go out of business. And T- TMZ should start. Work there. They should start contracting their work out because they get all the scoops. I don't know how they do it. They be in there. They be they, knowing. They have their own. They have their own woes. Like he in there, or he or she is in there. Like they just got connections and are getting all the tea. Anyways. Uh, was leaked to TMZ where they got there was an altercation that started before they got into an elevator, but it was elevator security footage, and um, they there was there was a struggle, and then they kind of go into the elevator, and she falls, and he kind of stands over her, and then he kind of looks up at the camera like, "Oh shit," <laughs> and then you know they go they go down, and look, maybe they go back up, and then he walks off, and she kind of limps off. So at first I saw it, I was like, oh, you know, they were they were tussling. Obviously they were in an argument. But if you actually slow the frame at the beginning, she actually swings at him, and you know he he misses. She, he, you know, he he dodges it, and then he kind of tosses her tosses her into the elevator. So of course a lot of people are talking about um, domestic violence, and you know, men should never put their hands on women, and uh, neither one. You know, obviously their relationship was toxic, and then they kind of had a back and forth. Um, she's kind of been pretty intent on the messaging that she's she's moved on and she's kind of learned from that from that relationship and Quavo kind of tweeted and saying you know I don't appreciate you know it was basically trying to defend everybody's trying to defend themselves and, and paint themselves in the best light obviously so I just wanted to kind of use this as a springboard to uh, let everybody know that as a man unless your life is in danger and I mean someone is holding a machete or a gun or a bazooka or a rocket launcher. I mean, if they're light, holding all those things, you're probably or dead. A li- or a lightsaber. Do not put your hands on a woman. That's just all I'm going to say. Like, that's it. Unless you're, you are literally fearing for your life, you do not put your hands on a woman in any, in any context. Like, there, there's a difference between being physically dominant over a woman and, and trying to like restrain there, there, there's a difference. So like, if I grab you like this and I'm like, calm down, but to grab a woman and sling her and toss her around, that's not cool. That's, I feel like that's so, that's such a confusing statement. Cause I've, I've straight up heard people, moms, anybody, someone put their hands on you. I mean, I ain't raised no coward. Like I've heard, I've heard this and it's so, because I don't condone domestic abuse. I don't condone physical abuse, whether it's domestic or international. Like whatever abuse it, is, I don't. I don't condone it. I don't know who queso or sweetness is. Um, so we. I'm not familiar. I, I like. I feel like I know the amigos, but I don't really know amigos. Amigos. Um, it's not amigos. They, they're not wearing sombreros. Okay. It's amigos. Put some respect on their name. I did with uh the amigo. <laughs> I gave them a whole title. Mios. Anywho, um, 
But it's it's so interesting because you know some like you rate I've like you hear parents I'm I know my mama said to me at one point like if someone like don't go provoke in fights don't go start fights but if someone puts their hands on you well you have the right to defend yourself so not some some chicks are wild like some women are wild like they 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 grew up scrapping. They fight their brothers. They fight their cousins. They fight dogs. They feel like if it's if it's a living being, being they will fight it. So, if a woman hit, and then you've got this whole equality thing, like in the world. So if a woman hits you, I cannot believe this is this is what I'm we're doing. Just, I'm not playing devil's advocate because he's good at advocating for himself. But it just seems like it's I'm such a shocked. contradictory thing because people will be like always defend it's yourself, huh? contradictory from who like people say defend you i i've heard i hear plenty of mothers defend your, say defend yourself doesn't mean striking somebody it could be removing yourself from a situation what if the what if the situation has you enclosed in an elevator then what i'm not condoning it i'm not i'm not saying he should have hit her i'm trying to, I'm trying to see but what she you're... swung she swung on him too like you don't know because i mean there was pictures she swung guess, she swung at him and then he threw her into the elevator maybe that was him diffusing this maybe he thought and then he got in the elevator with her <laughs> oh see i didn't watch the whole video this so, is why you won you I need mean, to watch some, the video like some women are domestic abusers i grew i knew an aunt not a blood aunt but one of them aunts you had um who she Look, would man. like she would beat her husband and the neighbor would call 911 but while she was beating him she'd be like he's beating me he's beating me so they would arrest him <laughs> and he's got all the bruises so like i guess that's why i get I, I it's i find it confusing because women there are women who will fight a man like they are not scared they'll like bow wow his ex like he, they both got arrested but she tore his little why are they up. why are you fighting in the first place because you're both toxic people so you have an opportunity in the bubbling up of your toxicity before it reaches peak toxic levels to remove yourself from no, the situation two toxic people it like it starts at peak toxic like did you watch malcolm and marie if those two were physically violent people it would have been a bloodbath like that's just how toxic people work, and when toxic people are in a relationship, that's just that's just how they go at each other. I'm not condo like I don't support. Sounds like you are. <laughs> I'm just I'm saying it's, say, it's it an sounds, interesting. It sounds like you are. It's an interesting it's not, it's perspective not, not interesting. to take it because seems, it seems you're black a parent. And white. It seems black and white to me. You're a parent. If someone like, what are you gonna t- like? When we were putting Salas on the bus, uh, we heard, I said as a man. Okay, so as a man, if I hit you, what you gonna do? Cause I don't hit you with a pillow and you number hit one, me back. Number one, you're not gonna hit me. I'm, cause I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be floating like a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know okay. what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna be bobbing and weaving up in this. I've hit you with a pillow, and you hit me back. So yeah, what are we gonna I say? You, I hit you with a rock bottom. <laughs> but that's different. Where there's a play fighting. That's different. Till you get hurt. I'm not gonna put myself in a situation with you where either one of us feel like we have to get to assault the other one. Cause that's not. One, that's not my personality, and I, I don't put myself around people who are like that. Um, now, if I find myself in a situation where I'm around and I have no control over it and I, ha- and I realize I'm in that situation with someone, I'm going to find a way to remove myself from it. If I have to be physical with someone, I'm, it's going to be in, in, in a sense that I can restrain them and then get away, right, or control them and then get away. So, like, I can grab you and keep you from getting your arms up and swinging at me, but that's not me slinging you somewhere, right? So there's a difference between being overly physical and downright abusive and protecting yourself. Like what he did, that, like I, he should not have, if you watched the video, granted we didn't see what, what preceded, but at the point where you see them, like at no point was he like in any actual, day, like he, he dodged, the, he dodged the, the, the swing. Hop in the elevator, kind of, Push her into the elevator kind and then of, and then let it. Her, no, I'm saying like you can just kind of oh gently can like put her in there physically and then you you step out or whatever like yeah I'm sure there was another elevator he could have he could have ridden. I'm just saying, man, it's I, how I was raised. Like even my mom, my mom told us, you know, you don't put your hands on a woman. Um, really, you don't put your hands on anyone unless you're defending yourself, but especially a woman. But yeah, I mean, if if you feel like you're in danger, like legit danger, your life is in danger. Like I said, somebody's holding a lightsaber. A lightsaber. They got they got their pet tiger like on a chain and, and they about to let him loose. Y'all see what I got to deal That's with. That's different. 
But no, come on, I'm man. pretty sure I saw something about, and I don't know when they broke up. I know this video was like a year ago. It happened in 2020. I don't know at what point they broke up, but I feel like she might have said something like their relationship is so great because he saved like his chicken wings for her. Um, and if a man saves chicken wings for you, that's real, no, that's true. That's real love. That um, is real love. So especially if they're if they're if they're drums. Again, I don't know these two people. I flat, you can have flats. So I don't flats. know queso. I don't know sweetness. But maybe if he had had his amigos with him, none of this would they're have not, happened. If not, you had quality okay, amigos, it. we're done. It's not no because you you. you you, this is you. Be, this is intentional. I'm about to be physically. Done. <laughs> I'm about to physically assault Y'all you saw the, you, because this you're is, disrespecting. This is your disrespecting witnesses. Quavo. You are all witnesses. That's it for what Rush Vibes. Sing? We're done. Or rap. We're done. Give me That's a song. It. Google Migos. Amigos. Tres amigos. You go Google Amigos and see what, see what pops up. Um, so yeah, that's it for uh, this episode of Rush Vibes. We appreciate you guys. Watching and listening, liking, subscribing. Um, this is episode 19 of Rush Vibes, which is incredible. Uh, you know, I knew that we were going to jump in with both feet and we were going to do this thing. But man, episode 19, episode, I think, uh, 16 of uh, on YouTube, because we had the first three episodes that were just only audio. So this is a uh, this is a nice Take little thing. Take off as an individual. Do me a favor. Um, so this is where Cardi. This is where Cardi's boo is. You guys pray for Jessica and and pray that she becomes a little bit more cultured, considering that a lot of the topics that we talk about are topics of of the culture. So, um, I did not know takeoff was an individual. Like I said, connect with us on social media. Quavo, uh, we're on Instagram awesome. and and Facebook. Takeoff. Rush vibes. You can support the channel if you feel if you so feel inclined. Cat, we're on Cash App. R U S H D V I. B E S. They sing bad and bougie. This is episode nineteen. Now we have a special announcement. Oh, and Narcos. About episode twenty. <gasps> Sweetheart. Talk it, talk it. I'm just I'm Sweetheart. just learning so much. Our special announcement. What is our special announcement? Next week's episode. Episode twenty. Twenty. We'll feature. Feature. The Migos. Our oldest child. <gasps> Solace Rushing. Our baby. Who has become so enamored with the idea of podcasting because she gets to see her mom on the big TV screen when we pull YouTube up. So again, I tell you, representation matters. Our daughter looks up at the TV screen and sees her mother and she thinks that she can do anything in the world because a woman who she loves, who looks like her, is on the screen. She doesn't know this YouTube. She, she just knows that her mom's on the TV. She just knows that the vice president probably the second most powerful woman in the country or the second most powerful person in the country looks like her. Representation matters. So we will have our daughter on, not for the whole segment because she needs to go to bed. <laughs> I don't care if it is spring break. She's going to bed. But we're going to let her get on here and, and introduce herself and, and get her a little used to I might have her do the, do the intro. You didn't even hear her earlier today. Uh, she was talking she, about... How she's going to have a podcast when she, she grows she, up. I, she said it while I was. Oh, you were? Saying, yeah. yeah. So she. So, oh, I'm so excited. Tune in, tune in for a little bit of uh, Miss Salas rushing. And um, hopefully you guys enjoy her and, and get a sense for why uh, we're so glad when she goes to bed. Because she is full <laughs> of energy. She's amazing. She's anything one else? of the most amazing people I've ever known. You got anything? I'm honored. Uh, I'm just, I'm just so impressed no, that we're, I didn't we're, know. We're done with that. We're who the Migos were, and I actually do know their songs. We're done with that. Did you mute me? No, I didn't mute. I'm about to hit the. We I'm about to bring in J Bo. Bad and bougie. Are you done? Yeah, I All am. Right. All right, everybody. Um, you know the deal. It's a pandemic. Vaccines are out. If you've gotten yours, great. If not, please still be safe. Wear a mask, social distance, wash Get your, your hands. Pants. We are almost there, but we're not there yet. We will be back next week with a new episode of Rush Vibes featuring Silas Rushing. Until then, y'all be safe, be good. Happy Easter. We out. Yeah, I done can't wait too far to stop me now.